are grade twelves. And so we start with the new chapter, Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry is just a big name given to a whole lot of different types of geometry, named after Euclid, and he's just quite a buff from back then. And a lot of the geometry we do today is just named after them, hence Euclidean geometry. Metric geometry is essentially based on two separate theorems, and we're going to start off with doing the first theorem, um, theorem one. And if we can completely understand how the theorem works in different scenarios, it's very, very useful. It'll set us up well. So we're going to take this full week to investigate the theorem from different angles, etc., how we use it in different types of examples. So the first two days, we're going to look at theorem one. Now, the theorem states as follows, that a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. So in this case here, we are given that PQ is parallel to BC. And if that is the case, then the sides are divided proportionally. This is not new, it's back from grade 9. So if the sides are divided proportionally, then that side over that side is equal to that side over that side. We could also say it differently. We could also say, like I've said over here, that AP over AB is equal to AQ over AC. So essentially that's saying top over the whole side equals top over the whole side. And there are different options and different ways that we can say it as long as we're consistent. So in the last one here, we've said that PB over BA, PB over BA is equal to QC over AC. In other words, I'm saying bottom over whole side equals bottom over whole side or top over bottom equals top over bottom. As long as we're consistent, we have six different options available there in terms of how we write the sides in proportion. So that's useful to just play around with as long as we're consistent in all that. So that's the first theorem in a nutshell. And now I'm going to do two examples with you. The first one here is we're going to find the missing lengths. So in the following sketch, PQ is parallel to BC. There we have PQ is parallel to BC. And we have that AP is 10, PB is 6, AQ is 15, and QC is X. And we need to find the length of X. So now if we look at our sketch, because we have these parallel lines here, immediately we know that the sides are in proportion. So in other words, 10 over 6 is equal to 15 over X. And we set that out here. And if we cross multiply, and it's important, the easiest way to do this is to just cross multiply. So 10 times X equals 15 times 6, and we get X is 9. Nice and easy. We could have also set it up differently, of course. We could have said X over 15 is equal to 6 over 10. It would have given exactly the same answer. And then if we look at number B over here, in this scenario here, we have ST parallel to PQ, and they give us a whole bunch of sides. And we need to find the length of TR. So TR is sitting here. So in this particular case, they've given you, they haven't given you QT, but they've given you the whole length. So if we want to find TR, which is the unknown, I would always put the unknown top left. It's a useful um, working um, ethic to have. So if we put TR, so it's bottom over whole length is equal to bottom over whole length. Okay, and if it's set up here, so we have TR over 24 equals 27 over 36 
we cross multiply TR times 36 equals 27 times 24 to get 648. And then TR will be 18 centimeters. I'm sure you're fine with that. Because this is geometry, though, we have to have to put a reason every time. And the reason here for theorem one is always just line perpendicular to the side of a triangle. That would be our reason every single time, line perpendicular to the side of a triangle. So whenever we use the parallel lines and we're finding lengths, that's our reason. Okay, let's keep moving here. Just one little hint I've talked about earlier and I find very useful is to put the length you're looking for in the top left of the ratio. So if we go back to these examples here, we're looking for TR, so top left. Here we're looking for X, so put it top left. Okay, it's just very useful in terms of um, getting standards going and working with something that is going to be useful. Okay, so then let's move on now to second type of examples. Is finding missing lengths and ratios. Now what we've just done is we found missing lengths. We found X and we found TR. But sometimes we need to also find missing ratios and that's slightly different. So just a little intro here to help us realize that lengths and ratios are two different things. And sometimes they will give us lengths and sometimes they give us ratios in the same question. And it's not to muddle the two. So in terms of just remembering some background here, if we given that AB is to BC is the same as 2 is to 3, remember we can also write that as a fraction. So AB is to BC can also be written as AP, AB over BC is equal to 2 over 3. So what is what we do is we say a b is to b c we write that as 2x is to 3x now the question is why do we put the variable there we put the variable there because remember this is a ratio it's not an actual length because the ratio of a b to b c could in fact be 20 centimeters is to 30 centimeters or 6 is to 9 or 10 is to 15 as long as when we simplify it it's in the ratio 2 is to 3. So all of these are exactly the same ratio if we simplify it back to 2 is to 3. So in sometimes in the same question, they'll give you ratios and they'll give you lengths. And it's just to know which one we're working with and which one we're actually asking. So the first thing to do is to always, if we're working with ratios, we add a variable. 2 is to 3 is actually 2x is to 3x or 2p is to 3p. We can use any variable um, of the alphabet. Okay, let's now move on to the next little important thing to remember. Sometimes they give you a ratio in this form. They'll say that AB is equal to two-fifths of BC. Now, which one is longer? Is AB or BC longer? BC is longer, but let's write that as a ratio, not as fra in fraction form. So if we rearrange here, we would just times by the five, and we get 5AB equals 2BC, but we want it as a fraction or a ratio. So we just go AB divided by BC equals 2 divided by 5. And therefore, as a ratio, AB is to BC is the same as 2 is to 5, or 2X is to 5X. We could obviously have just switched this around here and gone BC divided by AB is equal to 5 over 2. It doesn't matter as long as you see that this information given to you is in fact a ratio which can be rewritten in this form here. Um, that just helps us with when we get given examples now because the form that we're given it is, is not always the form that we want to work with. Okay, let's look at an example now. Okay, so if we look at this example here. In the sketch alongside, AB is to BC is 7 is to 3. Now that is a ratio or a length. That is a ratio. And AB is equal to 21 units and AE, that's a length. So AB is to BC. A 
AB to BC is 7 is to 3. You can see it's longer. Okay, it's not to scale, but it is definitely a bit longer. Um, and then AB is 21 units. They actually fill that in for you. And AE, which is this whole length here, is 20 units. Okay, so now we've got ratio and units, and it's just kind of working with them together. So let's see. The first thing we need to find here in A is the length of BC. Okay, now that 3 there is a ratio. It's not a length. So let's look at the work in here. Let's make it a bit bigger. So we over here now. So AB is to BC is 7 is to 3. Remember, we're going to write it as 7x is to 3x because it's not 7 units. It's 7 times something. 3 times something. But we know that AB is 21 in terms of a length. So therefore, we can equate the two. 7x is 21, therefore x is 3. But we're looking for BC, and BC is 3x. So 3 times 3 gives us 9 units. So now we know that this here is 9 units. Okay. Then the next one, B, let's use a different color for B. For B, we want the value of AG over GD. AG over GD. Now, if they want the value there, that could be in simplified form. It would just be the simplified ratio. You could work with the units or you could work with the ratio. It doesn't matter because the simplified form would, in fact, be the ratio anyway. So AG over GD. Before we look at the actual solution, let's have a look. What we've got here, we've got our parallel lines. So if we have our parallel lines there, that means that we have the sides in proportion. So 7 over 3 would similarly be 7 over 3 there. Let's look how we set it up because often we can see it straight away, but it's how we actually set it up that's quite important. Okay, so in this case here, remember we're looking for AG over GD. So we have um, AB to BC is 7 is to 3, or 7 over 3, it doesn't really matter. And then this is the important new step. AB over BC is equal to AG over GD. Why? What's my reason? From theorem 1, line parallel to the side of a triangle. Therefore, AG over GD is also 7 over 3. Okay, let's go and look at the third one now. The length of Fe. Okay, let's find Fe in a different color. So Fe is sitting down here. So we want the length of that. What we do know at the moment that the whole one is 20. Now keep it in mind again that these are parallel. That is parallel to that. We can immediately find that the sides are in proportion. So that over that is going to equal that over that. Or, because we've got the 20, the whole side, we probably want to work with that. And I'm looking for Fe, so I'm going to just use a highlighter here again. So I'm going to probably say something like bottom over whole side equals bottom over whole side. Okay, so let's go have a look at our memo here. So if we look at the memo here. Firstly, AG over GD is equal to AF over FE. Why? Because of these parallel lines. We make our statement line parallel to the side of a triangle. Therefore, AF over FE is also going to be 7 over 3 or 7X over 3X because we know that this was 7X over 3X. So we can't use X again because that would imply that they're the same length. So we need to use another variable. So we're going to use 7y over 3y. Okay. So here, we, we don't have to actually say that each time. Let it equal to. You can just, on your sketch, put 7y over 3y. Now, we know that AE, this whole side here, is 20. But we also know in terms of y, it's 10y. So hence we come up with AE, which is 10Y, is equal to AE, which is 20, therefore Y is equal to 2. 
So if I want to find the length of Fe, Fe is 3y, y we've found out to be 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. So that would imply that it is 6 units. Units is the length, 3y is the ratio. Okay, hopefully that was um, not too difficult. I think that it is quite an easy concept. It's how to set it out. And with practice and with doing a few examples, we'll be able to set it out. Um, you'll get used to it and you'll know what's expected. So now if you can go and practice these few, please. Page 229, exercise 1. We've just selected a few for you and I will put the memo up. Um, not immediately, but something that you can then refer to. Thank you, grade 12s. Okay, welcome back grade 12s. So now we're going to continue with Euclidean geometry. And the next little section is the converse of theorem 1. Remember theorem 1 was that if you had... If you had... Oops, let's just get rid of that. If you had a triangle and that is parallel to that then the sides are in proportion. In other words, top over bottom equals top over bottom, or top over whole equals top over whole. In other words, you could make relationship, you could make ratios, and from that you could find the length of the missing, you could either find the ratio or the lengths of the missing sides. Now, the converse or the opposite of that is that if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then that line is parallel to the third side. So if we look at triangle ABC here, it's given that AP over PB is equal to AQ over QC. In other words, the sides are in proportion and I've written it as 3 over 2 is equal to 3 over 2. But remember, we've put the variables there because this length, 3x and 2x, are different to these lengths here. The sides are in proportion, but the lengths could be different. And if that's the case, then this line here, PQ, is parallel to BC. And the reason that we use, because we always need a reason, is this bit here, that the line divides two sides of the triangle in proportion. It's quite a long little reason, but line divides two sides of triangle in proportion. We have to write that as our reason um, if the conclusion is that the lines are parallel. Okay, so it's just an exactly the opposite. In the theorem, first theorem, if the lines are parallel, then the sides are in proportion. In this one, is if the sides are in proportion, then the lines are parallel. So it's basically the direct opposite, the direct converse. So now let's move on to an example. So in the sketch alongside, AP is 12 units. Okay, we're not working with, that's a ratio, but we're working with actual lengths. PB is 8, AQ is 15, and QC is 10. Now here, there isn't a conflict of interest. We aren't working with ratios and lengths. We're just working with lengths. So that makes it a lot easier. And we need to prove that this line here, PQ, is parallel to this line here. So following on directly from our, our converse statement, is that if the sides are in proportion, then the line is parallel. So we're going to work with the sides. So here, AP over PB is 12 over 8, which is 3 over 2. And AQ over QC is 15 over 10, which is 3 over 2. And these two, in fact, are equal to each other. Therefore, the sides are equal. Therefore, PQ is parallel to BC. Reason, line divides two sides of triangle in proportion. Okay, very long reason there, but yeah, we can get used to it. Then a second example, 
the concept is very simple. It's just that sometimes it comes cloaked in a, in a, a sketch that looks a little bit more complicated. But if you break it down, it's really not so bad. Okay, so now they tell us that PS is parallel to BR. So that is parallel to that. They also tell us that SQ is parallel to RC. And what do we need to prove? Let's do the proof in the highlight. We need to prove that PQ, that one there, that thicker line, is parallel to that there. Okay, now keeping in mind that we've just done theorem 1, and theorem 1 says that if I have parallel lines, then that over that is equal to that over that. So then working with these red parallel lines here, yeah, that would mean that that side over that side is equal to that side over that side. And there's your link. So if AP over PB is proportional to AS over SR, and then in turn AS over SR is proportional to AQ over QC, it would follow then that that over that must also equal to that over that. And if you look at the big triangle A, B, C, that implies that PQ is parallel to BC. I hope you see that in terms of visualizing it with color, etc. Okay, now let's see how we set it up in the solution. The, the writing out of the solution, I think, is often what gets us. So let's have a look here. So we've started off by saying AP over PB is equal to AS over SR. Reason from theorem 1. But we also said that AS over SR is equal to AQ over QC. Okay, let's maybe just add here that this is all in triangle ABR. Might just help you to see it. And this is all in triangle ACR. So we're working in two different triangles. But because AS over SR, in a way, if I can call it a common side, is there, it follows on logically that AP over PB is equal to AQ over QC. Therefore, PQ must be parallel to BC. Why? Because of my reason of the converse, which is line divides two sides of a triangle in proportion. Okay, so there you have it. Um, using theorem one, but then using the converse as well. You've got your two new reasons. And if I can just give you one little, um, one little hint here is that when you work when you're with your triangles, isolate the different triangles you're working with. So there's your one triangle, different to the second one, which is here, different to the third one, which is the big one. So isolate your triangles, um, look for the parallel lines, use color. Um, it's all going to be very helpful in the long run. And then our practice for today is page 233, exercise 2. A, 1, 3, and D. Okay, good luck. Break. Okay, grade 12. So we continue with Euclidean geometry now. And the next little section is multiple ratios on a line. Now, the reason for even needing to do this is shown to you by a classic example here. We're going to look at example 1. In the following sketch, AB to BC is in the ratio 3 is to 2. In other words, AB to BC is in the ratio 3 is to 2. And similarly, we have the ratio BC to CD is 6 is to 5. Now, if you can see here, those are two different ratios, but there's a problem here because we've got 6 and 2 referring to the same line segment BC, and yet they're different ratios. So the first thing that we need to do is identify the fact that they're different ratios. So we can call this 3x is to 2x. 
and we could call the other one 6y is to 5y. It could also easily be a p or a k. The, the variable is not important as long as they're different because they're different ratios. So we're dealing with x's and y's. <coughs> so they've given us the facts and then now we need to determine a, b is to c, d. So <coughs> let's have a look at the solution. They've set it out very nicely in five steps. So firstly, we want to represent the lengths in terms of variables according to the given ratios. So A, B is to B, C. And I've, I've done it on this original sketch over here. And it's very important to visualize it. So there we've visualized it. And we've called it 3X. And we've called it 2X. And we've called it 6Y and 5Y. Okay, so we've labeled it clearly. Now step three is the first one where we start applying some of our knowledge here. So the problem is that BC is represented in terms of an X and a Y. So we find a line segment on the sketch that is expressed in terms of both variables. So here, BC is expressed in terms of 2X and 6Y, and it's referring to the same segment, BC. So now, because it's referring to the same segment, we can just equate the two expressions 6x, sorry, 2x is equal to 6y, and therefore x is equal to 3y. So now if we've got that little fact here, we can express this whole segment in terms of either x's or y's. So in this particular case, we're going to express it in terms of y because I've worked out that x is equal to 3y. So we need to go back to the original question, which is determine AB is to CD. So we express that ratio as a fraction by using the lengths on the sketch. So AB over CD is equal to AB is going to be 3x over there over CD, which is 5Y. But we can't work with that because we've got two different variables. So we need to express it in terms of one variable. And we've got that because we've worked out that X is equal to 3Y. So wherever we see an X, we replace it with 3Y. So we're back here now in step 5. Substitute the result from step 3 into the expression in step 4 and simplify. So AB over CD is equal to 3X over 5Y. But in place of X, we're going to put 3Y, which then equates to 9Y over 5Y. Same variable, so we can cancel, so it's 9 over 5. So essentially what we're doing is we're writing the ratios in terms of different variables, X and Y. Then we find an expression where we can express either X in terms of Y or Y in terms of X. And then once we working with one variable, they're all in terms of one variable, we can go and look for any ratio and any length that is required. Okay, let's have a look at a second example. But before we do, I'll put a remember here. Remember, whenever we are dealing with ratios, not lengths, we must include a variable. Okay, that isn't necessary when we're dealing with lengths, because a length is a length. But whenever we get given sides or yeah, sides in terms of ratios, we need to apportion an X or a Y or a P or a K, etc. Okay, let's have a look at number two. In the following sketch, AB to BC is 3 as to 2. And AC to CD is 10 is to 3. Now before we go and look at the question or what else, can you see that this is going to be y again? You've got to portion this a different variable. This would be x. Now we need to look for a section of the line or a line segment where we can equate. We can make an equation so that we can solve for x and y. And I'm hoping you can see here that from A to C, we have that equal to 5x, but it's also equal to 10y, and that's going to be our little clue. So let's go and look at the solution here now. 
we need to determine AB to be D. AB to be D. And at the moment, it's a mixture of X's and Y's. So we need to first express X in terms of Y or Y in terms of X. So, to have a look at a solution here. AB to BC is 3X is to 2X. And AC to CD is 10 is to 3. They've called it 10 Y is to 3 Y. So they've started by introducing what they've done. It's not necessary for you to do that as long as you show the line here. As long as you show your work in how you've apportioned, you've got a little diagram going. It's not important to say, to introduce that, as long as we've got the sketch. If you, yeah. So now, like I said, you can see that that A to C can be written in terms of X's and Y's. Here it is, yeah. So 3X plus 2X equals 10Y. So we equate that and we now have X equal to 2Y. And that we're going to substitute a little bit later in our workings. So in our workings here, we're looking for what? We're looking for AB is to BD, or we can write that as a fraction AB over BD. What is AB? AB is 3X. What is BD? BD is 2X plus 3Y, because it's from here all the way to there, so it's 2X plus 3Y. Now we want to substitute, so it's 3X, but in place of x, we're going to put 2y. And then you can happily see that you do the work in x's and y's. Y's cancel. And so our final answer is written as a ratio ab to bd, 6 is to 7. Now, the next example, number b over here, kl to ln is 3 Okay, let's just actually write this here. So KL to LN is 3X is to 13X. And KM, KM is 5 to MN, 3, 5 is to 3, 5Y is to 3Y. Now before we, we look at the solution, if I look at KL, that can't be expressed in terms of y. If I stop here, there's nothing there. But the only thing that's going to work here is the full measurement from k all the way to n. Because that can be expressed in terms of x's and y's. So from k to n, the whole line segment is going to be 3x plus 13x. Or it can also be written as 5y plus 3y. We do the little maths and we end up with y equals 2, 2x. Two Go back to the question. KL is to LM. They want to know that as a, as a fraction. So KL, what is KL? KL is over here. It's 3x. What is LM? So now if we look at LM, which is sitting here, LM is not 5y. It's also not 3y. LM is not anything in terms of x or y but it can be written in terms of something else plus something else or another line segment minus another line segment so if you look at lm which is sitting here okay, i'm just going to go like that to just highlight that section there you can see and i'm just going to change the color it's looking messy again but it's just very visual you can see that this whole length here 5y minus that length there, 3x, is going to produce lm. So it's going to be 5y minus 3x, which is sitting here. But we don't want two variables. So we replace y with 2x, and we do the maths, and we end up with 3 over 7. So kl over lm can be written as 3 over 7, or we can say kl is to lm is equal to 3 is to 7. It depends how they ask the question. Okay, so working then with ratios, 
um, in terms of a line and in terms of when they're giving you, the, they're wanting the same line, but it's in a combination of different ratios. This is how we need to work with it. And if you can go and practice a few now, we're going to look at 3A, B, E, and F. Once again, the memo will follow tomorrow. Okay, grade 12s, good luck and enjoy it. Now we move on to area ratios, the last um, section in this first week of Euclidean geometry. What it really is, is just comparing the, the ratios of areas in triangles. And there's, to start off with, there's different relationships. There's, uh, and I've called them type 1, type 2, and type 3. And there's relationship happening between the different areas, which will help us simplify when it comes to finding the ratios. So the first type is when they have the same height. So if we look here at area of triangle ABP, ABP is this triangle here. And then secondly, if we look at the area of triangle APC, this one here, we need to find the ratio or the fraction of those two areas. Now, if we look the green one, and the pink one have the same height. There it is in orange, it has the same height. So if we write it as a ratio here, the area of any triangle is half times base times height over half times base times height. The, the base of the first one is BP and the base of the second one is PC. But we can now cancel what's common. A half is common and the height is the same, so we can cancel it. So the area of triangle ABP over the area of triangle APC is just equal to BP over PC, which in fact is just the basis of the triangle. So the area of ABP over area of APC is the same as the ratio of their bases. Okay, that's if they have the same height. Now type 2 is if they have a common angle. So here we look at the area of triangle APQ, APQ, which is this one here, over the area of ABC, which is going to be this one here, the big one. Now, if you look at that one, they definitely do not have the same height. But the thing that they do have in common is they have this common angle A because it's part of triangle APC, the pink one, and part of the green one. So now if we want to talk about the ratio of their sides, we are reminded of trig, the area rule in trig. So let's just quickly remind ourselves here. So if we've got the triangle and we've got A, B, C, little a, little b, and little c, remember the area is going to be a half, times little c times little b times the sign of big A. So we would need a half. We need little c, which is that length, little b, which is that length, and sine of the included angle. And then we could use the sine rule in trig to find the area. Sorry, not the sine rule. We could use the area rule in trig. So now applying that here in this type 2 example, the area of triangle APQ is going to be half times AP times AQ times the sine of the included angle A. And then the area of triangle ABC is going to be half times AB times length AC times sine of the included A, angle A. Now, once again, we can cross out everything that's common. And we are left with AP times AQ over AB times AC. But remembering from our previous theorem one is that if I have two lines here that are parallel, PQ is parallel to BC, then I know that that length over that length is equal to that length over that length. Now that is very interesting in this little scenario here because I can then say that AP over AB is equal to AQ over AC. Remember my reason for theorem one is line parallel to the side of a triangle. 
Now, because AP over AB is equal to AQ over AC, okay, there's AP over AB, but because AQ over AC is equal here, I can replace AQ over AC with AP over AB. So instead of, so if we go back here, there's AP over AB and AQ, AQ over AC is here, but I can replace it with this one, which I have. So it's ended up with AP squared over AB squared. Or I could have swapped and replaced with the other one and ended up with AQ squared over AC squared. So the main thing that we're trying to do here is just to see the relationship between the different lengths and the areas, etc., etc., et um, which is very useful when we come to the examples you'll see a little bit later. Now the third type is here, when I have triangles which lie between the same parallel lines. So here, this length here, and this length here, these two lines that I've now highlighted with red, are parallel to each other. And if we look at the triangles that lie between these two parallel lines, we've got triangle ABC, we've got triangle DBC, and we've also got triangle PQR. Now, they are equal to each other. They are equal to each other. Why are they equal to each other? Because the area of any triangle is a half times base times height, half times base times height, half times base times height. But their bases, the base BC and the base QR, firstly, are either the same base or they're equal bases. And their heights here must also all be the same because they lie between the same parallel lines. So if the bases are the same or equal and they lie between the same parallel lines, the area is the same. So if I talked about a ratio here between these three triangles, it would be 1 is to 1 is to 1. Okay, so that's another relationship. And it's just highlighting these three options, which are going to make it very useful when we work with um, examples when there's a whole lot of triangles all jumbled together. Now we're going to move down and do an example here. In the sketch alongside, PQ is parallel to AC. So PQ is parallel to AC. We are also given that PR is parallel to BC. And we're also given that BQ to QC is 4 is to 3. Remember, that would be a ratio, not a length. And the first question is, we want to find the area of ABQ over the area of ACQ. So essentially, we want to work out what is the ratio of the green one to the orange one. Now, we go back to our three types. Either we have them with the same height. Or we have a common angle, or we have them lying between the same parallel lines. Now, this one, I think you can see, hopefully, that our height is the same of the green one and the orange one. That would be the height over there. So we would use, in this case, half times base times height, half times base times height. So if we look at the solution down here, okay, we've redrawn it here. If we want to find the area of ABQ, it's a half times base times height, and my base is BQ, and BQ is just 4. And the area of triangle ACQ is a half times base times height, and my base is QC, which has the ratio of 3. So that answer is 4 is to 3. So the area of this triangle to the area of that one is 4 is to 3. Let's go and have a look at the second one now. So if we look at the second one, yeah, the area of BPQ, let's quickly look here, 
This is BPQ. Can you see I'm using color? It just stands out much better over ABQ. ABQ. Let's use a different color. And remember, this was 4 is 2, 3. So now if we look at this, we've got um, three options again. We've got three types. So it's either same height or line between the same parallel lines or sharing a common angle. Now this one, it is sharing a common angle. But um, if you look carefully, we don't have like a second... You look at the orange triangle we don't really have a second link that's part of the triangle so once again with this one again we're going to work with these bases and they have the same height both of these triangles have the same height now you think okay well that doesn't really help us because what are these bases here and these bases here we do know what they are I'm hoping that you can remember that because we have a parallel line here, let's get rid of this, and a parallel line here, we know that that over that must equal that over that. And we know what they are because it's 4 over 3. So that would mean that this is going to be 4x over the whole one, which is going to be 7x. And so now if we go back to our solution over here, with BP as base, they're just explaining it again. I've just done the visuals. BP as base and AB as base, we now have the same height, which is up here, and we can go and work from there. So I'm going to leave you to have a look and work through what we've done. But we've worked with the type 1 again with the same height. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay, now we're going to look at the third one, and I've got the third one down here. Okay. We here want the area of triangle APR, which is this triangle here over the area of triangle ABC, which is this one here. Now we can see very clearly here that we have a common angle of angle A. So as soon as there's a common angle, we're going to use the area rule of trig from trig. So here if we want APR, our little blue one, going to be half times AP times RA times the sine of A and then if I want the big one which is the orange one I'm going to do a half times the whole length times the whole length times the sine of A. We can cancel that, cancel that, cancel that, cancel that and then we know that PA is going to be 3X, RA is going to be 3Y over 7x, 7y. Cancel the x's, cancel the y's, and we end up with 9 over 49. Okay, so if you can have a look at that, it really helps if you put the 3y and the 7y and the 3x and the 7x in place. Then when it comes to this line here, you just look at the sketch and you replace it with the 3x's and the 7x's, etc. Okay, now if we look at number D, let's go back here. Let's look at first BPQ. So BPQ is this triangle here. And ACQ is this triangle here. Now we need to try and find out the relationship between these two. And if we go back to our types, type 1 is when they have the same height. No, there's no same height here. Type 2, common angle. No. Type 3, line between the same parallel lines. No. So none of those three types are going to help us here to find the relationship in areas between these two triangles. So then we've got to look for something else. And the something else we've got to look here, look for here is the relationship between maybe these and others and then a common link. So if we go back to what we've already proved 
and we look for PBQ. PBQ, it's there. Uh, and then if we go and look for ACQ, it's there. Okay, so it's in those two there. So it's in this one that we've already proved. And it's in this one that we've already proved. And let's look a little bit closely here. ACQ is there what I'm looking for. BPQ is there what I'm looking for. And if you look carefully at the other two triangles that we've been working with, they are the same. So that's what we would see as like a common, that's what they've got in common. So if we can write these two in relationship with one of the other, we will then be able to work out, we'll be able to go back and look at the answer. So now let's look at their solution. So I just want to go over that again. So if there's nothing type 1, type 8, or type 3, we've got to look for something else. And then we've got to go back to what we've already proved. It's almost like one of those hence questions. So we go back and we look at what we've already proved. And there's a relationship here. There's a, a very definite relationship happening. Because we're looking for BPQ, which is there. We're looking for ACQ, which is there. And what ties these two relationships together is the fact that those two are used in both. It's like a common link. And now we're going to use that in the proving of number D. So let's go and look how we set it up. Because once again, the setting up is the important thing. So we've already found out from number B this true fact. And we found out in number A this true fact. So now it's to kind of link them together. So we therefore know that if we work down here first, that the area of triangle BPQ is equal to, all we're doing is we're just multiplying by that, we're taking it to this side. And then we go over here, and the area of ABQ is equal to 4 over 3, we're taking that, and we're timesing it on that side over there, and we get 4 over 3 times the area of ACQ. Now, keep it in mind that this is what we're trying to prove. Always keep in mind what you're trying to prove, okay? We want to find out what the area of that is over the area of that. So we're looking for BPQ, and that's why we've put BBQ here. So it's 4 over 7 times the area of ABQ. Now, ABQ is this. Oops, we're running out of power here. Yeah. Is that. So we take that and we put it there. Then we multiply out. 4 times 4 over 7 times 3 is 16 over 21. Now, what? how can I get rid of this? That is part of what I'm looking for in the question. So we just take it underneath. We divide by that. And so what I'm looking for now is I've found the area of BPQ over the area of ACQ is 16 over 21. And it's I've got it by looking at relationships between the other areas, substituting in, playing around with it, working with it. Quite a difficult example, but... Um, we need to be able to know how to do these as well. And they're quite fun when it kind of all works together and we get to the answer. Now, the last example we're going to be doing is one where they lie between the parallel lines. And they're quite easy to spot. So in the sketch alongside, we've got AE parallel to BD. That's given. And we're also given that ED to DC is 5 is to 12. So I filled that in already. And what we need to determine is this. So let's highlight my triangles again. We're going to use a bit of color. So it's got ABD. So it's this triangle here. Okay, I'm going to shade that one. We need to prove that one over BDC. Let's go blue BDC, which is this one here. Now, if we look at those at the moment, they don't share the same height. They also don't share the same. Um, they don't share the same height. They don't share a common angle, and they do not lie between the same parallel lines. So once again, it's none of those three types. But there are other links that we can use. So if we go back and we look here, the fact that they've given us that these two are parallel means that triangle BAD is going to be equal in area to BED. Do you see that? Because why? Because they have the same base and they are between the same parallel lines. So those two orange triangles are equal. Now, the second orange triangle, I'm going to highlight it here. This one here 
does have a relationship with this blue one here. This blue one here. Can you see they have the same height? So they have the same height. And there's your link. Okay. So let's go through it again. We had to prove that this one here, what the relationship is between this one and this one, there wasn't a direct relationship. But these two orange ones were equal because um, lay between the same parallel lines. And then in turn, these two have the same height. And we have um, the sides in proportion 5 is to 12. Therefore, we can link to what we're looking for, that triangle over that triangle. So that's what it kind of, that's how we went about doing it. Now let's have a look at the actual solution. Oh, why didn't that do that? That's weird. Um, let's just try. Uh, okay, that's better. Um, so they've gone through the strategy, but that's fine. I've done the strategy with you. Okay, so what you really need to write up is this is what we need to write up. Yeah. So the area of EBD was e over BDC. No, that isn't enough. To, yo, let's just see what they've gone. Okay. Area of EBD over BDC. Uh, we need to somewhere put the link. I wonder. Oh, okay. Sorry, they've done it here. The area of EBD. I'm first going to look at what they've done and then just show you an alternate way of writing it up. The area of EBD, this one here, over BDC. Okay, so that's what we're looking for is a half, which is 5 over 12. But the area of, mm, I suppose that's also okay. So now if we just compare it to an, an alternate solution, because remember, as long as you write it correctly, there are different ways of doing it. So we could also have just put this first, which is probably what I would have done. I would have said, the area of triangle BAD is equal to the area of triangle BED and your reason would be same base, same height, same as this reason here. And then we would go and we would say the area of what we're looking for, triangle ABD over the area of triangle BDC. ABD is going to be equal to the area of BED over the area. Sorry, this is getting untidy because I'm running out of space, but hopefully you're following the gist. The area of triangle BED over the area of triangle BDC. Because um, we've already proved that there. And then this one here is going to be a half times your base. What's a B, D is E, D times the height over half my base, which is D, C times the height. Cancel, 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 cancel. E, D we already know is going to be 5 over 12 and there we have the answer so essentially what we've done here and what we've done here is exactly the same it's just slightly different because this part that they put second i put first and just to show you that the layout doesn't have to be exact as as long as you're following very clearly and logically um what needs to be done okay so this was quite a long session but if you can go and practice a few of them, there's just two that you need to practice to make sure that you've got it. And then we've done the week of this whole theorem we've thoroughly covered.